Uh, all right, YouTube family. So today I wanted to talk about the number one secret to losing fat. So the only reason I'm addressing this is because, you know, someone was asking under my comments, they were like, hey, man, um, I love this information about how to lose belly fat, about how to lose fat, how to get lean, but I need some new information. Is there any new information? So guys, let me tell you what the number one secret to losing belly fat is, right? And that secret is that there is no fucking gimmicks. There is no shortcuts and there are no fads. There's no fancy shit. The water fasting, all that temporary stuff is not how you lose the fat, guys. A lot of people are looking for that answer. They're looking for a different answer. If you tell them, all right, if you want to lose fat, make sure that you're strength training, eating high protein and in a calorie deficit. If you tell them that, they'll be like, okay, cool, cool, cool. But it got to be something else. And they're always searching for a different answer because that answer doesn't appease them. It's not fast enough for them, right? They're looking for different fads. They have the shiny object syndrome. And the truth is when you don't accept the truth, that's the only truth, then there is no answer, right? Because calorie deficit with high protein and strength training is the best way, the most proven way to lose the fat. There is no fat loss. There is no weight loss without a calorie deficit, right? However, people don't like that answer. So when someone says, hey, do keto, which is effectively usually a calorie deficit because you're cutting out carbs and people usually eat you know, in a deficit when they do it and they see that it works for a little bit, but then it's unsustainable. And they're like, wow, it really worked when I did keto. And I'm like, no shit, you were in a calorie deficit and you're eating high protein. Of course it's gonna work. So the problem that a lot of you guys have, like I said, is your mindset. You're always chasing different little fads. And then when you can't stick to it, you get frustrated and then you project onto others. Now, the only reason I'm even saying this it's because I used to be that person too, all right? So I used to be that dude that literally watches other YouTubers and then reads bodybuilding.com articles. And I'm looking at the people and I'm like, they gotta be on steroids. There's no freeze. There's no way that they're, they're this consistent or there's no way their genetics are that good. And in reality, it was really that they were really dedicated. They had the discipline um, and they really just, they showed up no matter what. And a lot of us don't do that. A lot of us don't show up no matter what. And the reason we even search for short-term fixes, diets, and things like that is to make up for lost time. Cause we fucked around for a long time and then it's like, okay, it's summertime in two weeks. Let me lose the weight that it really takes, you know, six months to lose. Let me try to lose it in two weeks. Obviously you're gonna lose a lot of muscle and you're not gonna be able to lose that weight and you're gonna be even more frustrated. So when you do see someone that's able to be consistent online, you get frustrated and you project and you comment negative things. Um, I know a lot of people in my comments, they've been like, oh my God, like you're on steroids or they've been like, you're lying. That's not what you eat. And it's like, listen, when you're consistent, you'll be, you'll be surprised about how the compound effect actually works. Like when you're consistent over time, slowly and slowly and slowly, you're going to notice that, you know, every single rep matters. Like when you're trying to grow your back, like someone yesterday asked me, like, how do you get back definition? I mean, I used to ask people the same question. It's like, pull-ups and pull-ups. I've probably done a million pull-ups like at this point. I'm not even lying. I've probably done a million pull-ups. I've done a million reps of lat pull-downs. I've done a million seated rows, deadlifts, all of that. And each rep does matter because obviously when you do a workout, say during a workout, I do, you know, 50 pull-ups, right? After one workout, that's nothing. But then after a month of workouts, that's 200 pull-ups. And then after a year of workouts, that's 1200 pull-ups, right? And then after 10 years, that's like 120,000 pull-ups, right? So that's a lot of pull-ups. Now me, I usually do pull-ups on back day and then I warm up with pull-ups on chest day and shoulder day. And then I also have calisthenics days. But that's just an example of how the compound effect works. Another person the other day asked me like, hey man, how do you get your deadlift up? Because you're at 585 and I'm nowhere near that. And I'm like, it's really not that hard. Think about this guys. If you add five pounds, every two weeks on your deadlift. Say you're, you're repping 225 for six reps on deadlifts, right? If you add five pounds every two weeks, within three years, you'll be doing five plates for six reps, right? Now, after the first session, you'll only be repping 230. Like your second session, you'll be repping 230 for six. That seems like nothing. You're like, oh, wow, that's, that's nothing. But when you are consistent over time, you will reap the benefits. Like a lot of people ask me that, especially when I deadlift in the gym. Like if I go to Crunch or if I go to like, uh, I don't go to crunch EOS or something like that. And I'm deadlifting. People are looking at me. They're like, Oh dude, you're strong. Like, how'd you get that strong? And it's like, everyone starts from nothing. Like, and that should give you enough hope. Everybody starts from nothing. Everyone starts with the bar, right? 
But if you keep, if you stay consistent, eventually your form gets a little bit better. And then when your form gets better, you could add more weight. Then when you add more weight, you add five pounds every two weeks and you make progress, progress, progress. And eventually you'll be at the end result. And a lot of people see the end result and they're like, you know, they, they assume that you've always been there, but they don't understand your journey. They don't know your journey. And like I said earlier, I used to be that guy that would literally like I would watch. I saw this one dude and I was like, he got to be on steroids. There's no way he's he's that consistently lean. Yeah, man, he got to be on steroids. And I was like reading into all the reddits. This was like back in uh, senior year of high school when I was like skinny and then I had like a little belly. It was weird. But um, yeah, I used to watch all these articles and be like, read all these articles and read all the comments, go to reddits and be like, there's no way he's that lean. He can't be that lean. There's no way. And I used to just like literally feed into it and then comment negative shit like like you're on steroids you're on steroids you know shit and get blocked by people <laughs> shit on instagram too that's when i had like no followers but um i used to like go on instagram bodybuilding.com and just i didn't believe in myself to the point where when anyone else was like reaching the goals that i wanted to reach i would project onto them and i'd be like you can't reach that goal you're lying but what i didn't notice is like in their captions and through like their their videos they would they would kind of give you game and i remember one thing that one guy said it stuck with me because once I actually started being successful on my journey, I noticed that I do the same thing. And he said, all of you guys are accusing me of steroids. All you guys are accusing me of this, this and that. But I'm 20, what was he, like 25 or something? He was 26? I think he was 26, 28. He was like 28 in the IFBB Pro, right? Um, he was 28 and he's like, I'm here. I'm here on my, my girlfriend's birthday. I'm here on my birthday. I'm in the gym on Christmas. I'm in the gym on Thanksgiving because I show up no matter what. You know, I don't binge on Thanksgiving. He was saying all this stuff. I wasn't paying attention because I was just like, this guy's on steroids, right? And then when I started like actually like being committed to the journey and people started accusing me of steroids, I realized that, you know, especially when I went monk mode, like I went monk mode for um, like freaking 18 months of just working on business, right? 18 months of scaling my business and then um, just working out consistently, getting in the best shape possible, not talking to any girls, not messaging any girls, not wasting any time, being really, really focused, right? And those, those, uh, you know, 18 to 20 months, I was like, I was really locked in to the point where I would go to the same gym, see the same people. So I didn't really see, and I wasn't really like, I was posting on social media, of course, but I wasn't really like noticing like that, that like, you know, people would accuse me of like steroids and shit like that. So then once I actually got out of monk mode and, you know, I moved somewhere different, people started being like, oh, yo, what do you do for working out? And people started to notice me and I didn't realize because I was so locked in. I was, I literally went to the gym on Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, New Year's Eve, my birthday. Um, I, I went to the gym, I grinded, I did Zoom calls all those days. Like I just kept going, 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 right? And that's what it takes to really reach your goals. Like you can't, you can't just be like, all right, as soon as I hit that goal, if I, had, if, I, if I hit that goal, I'll be good. Like there was this one dude um, in the gym, he came up to me, it was, I think it was Anytime Fitness, and he was like, yeah, man, like if I had your arms or you know, your chest, I would definitely just like stop working out. And I'm like, that's exactly why you don't have, you know, that's why you don't have the arms and chest because you're focused on the end result, not the process. You don't love the process. I come to the gym not only for stress relief, but just to get better because when you get better physically, or you're making improvements physically, it takes a lot of mental discipline and you do get stronger mentally, right? Showing up when it's raining, snowing and all that shit, it's like, that's really, that's, that's tough, right? But that'll take your mind to the next level when you show up on those days, it'll take your mind to the next level. So I look at the gym as, as just, you know, something that I do because not only, I mean, I love the gym, of course, I love working out, I love being in shape and all of that, but also just, just like a testament of my discipline, right? Because when I go to the gym, it's like, okay, I'm getting my day started. Like I'm, I'm executing everything I need to execute. And when I go to the gym, like afterwards, I'm usually way more productive. I'm in a way better mood. Like if I'm doing Zoom calls or if I'm going into work, like I'm always in a way better mood, right? So I just wanted to let you guys know, like the reason that a lot of you guys aren't at your goals is because not only are you just like focused on on like kind of blaming everybody else or like downplaying everyone's success, but you haven't looked internally and you haven't realized that you lack self-esteem and self-belief to the point where you won't even do the bare minimum in order to get results, right? You'll go to the gym for two weeks and be like, yo, I don't have results. Then you'll go on YouTube and be like, yo, all of you guys are on steroids, you're on steroids, you're on steroids. When in reality, it's like that person literally just did a little bit more than bare minimum consistently. 
and they follow nutrition. Like for me, when I realized that you don't have to be in the gym seven days a week doing two hours of cardio and doing two hours of lifting, I was like, oh, okay, I can do this. This is sustainable, you know, hitting the gym four to five days a week and then executing nutrition, consistently eating high protein. Like those are the things a lot of people don't do. They don't consistently hit the gym. Like, I don't know how many people, like I, I haven't seen a lot of people consistently hit the gym. Usually when somebody asks me on like Instagram, they'll DM me and they'll be like, hey man, I, I just really need to lose this belly fat, this is that. They're not consistently hitting the gym, right? Number one. Number two, their nutrition is absolutely horrible or they're drinking a lot or they're, they're eating good during the week, eating bad on the weekends. Like these are the things that they're doing and they don't realize that they're literally in their own way, they're self-sabotaging through their actions. Because if your goal is to lose fat, is to obviously have muscle and you're not eating enough protein and you're eating a lot of fried foods, obviously your goal is not gonna happen, right? So I just wanted to say, this is pretty much a rant. This went on a little bit longer than I intended, but I just really wanted to come on here and say like, listen, the first thing you want to do is before you blame everybody else or you downplay success or you say everyone's on steroids, actually look at the physique, look at the amount of time that they've worked out and then kind of like either get inspired. Like for me, like when I saw Alex Eubanks, I was like, I'm inspired because that's like a realistic, you know, natural body. He's, he's like, what, 175 or something like that. So I was like, that's, that's pretty realistic. That's pretty inspiring. Right. So I use that as motivation, as inspiration. And you'll notice like when you're consistent, like you'll actually gain muscle. And there's two ends of the spectrum, right? There's the one end that people are like, yeah, fitness is super simple. You just show up and you just eat what you're supposed to. And then the other end of the spectrum, it's like the people who like blame genetics and they have self-limiting beliefs to the point where they don't even do the work because they're saying, oh yeah, it's all genetics. Look at him, look at him. And it's like, genetics play a role, yes. But if you're trying to get to your goal, most people can with consistency, consistency through nutrition and through strength training, guys. Hope this video helped. All right. How do you turn this off, bro?